Hello, and welcome to Living Proof, the Isaac Newton Institute podcast. My name is Dan Aspel. In this episode, I will be speaking to Professor Natalia Weisfeld, until recently head of the Chair of Methods of Mathematical Physics at Odessa I.I. Mechnikov National University, and currently a senior lecturer at King's College London. Natalia was forced to flee Ukraine after the Russian invasion of her home country in February of this year. She has since travelled across Europe with her wheelchair-bound mother and their dogs, eventually finding sanctuary in Britain, in part thanks to INI's Solidarity for Mathematicians programme. What follows is Natalia's story in her own words. So our journey began really from in Ukraine after three weeks, I think, after the beginning of war, when we escaped and crossed the border with uh, Moldova with my mom and uh, our dogs. And uh, that's all we took with us, our rucksack, pills of dogs and mom, and started our trip. And we didn't know how long it will be, as all other people. Just we understood that we want to find some place where we can stay for some period and understand where we are at all. And in such a way, we crossed practically all Europe by bus, by car, by train, because it was impossible to take plane because of dogs. They're very old and can't stay in cargo, of course. And we uh, came to Spain, to a small, nice uh, town, uh, which name on Mediterranean Sea, which name is San Pedro del Penatar. <laughs> and uh, we found the uh, apartments and uh, there practically all started because uh, it was obvious that we need to find some place where we have right to live. And because I had to this moment English visa with right to work, I decided that mom can apply for English Ukrainian scheme. So in such way we uh, we're waiting, we applied documents, online was possible to apply them online, thanks very much. It was very important for us because for mom it was practically impossible to go to some embassy or something like this, or call center. And uh, we were waiting for her visa. And I was started, you know, uh, searching some position. Of course, first of all, I went to Jobs Ak Uk uh, site and started to find something there. But uh, <clears throat> I understood that I, many things, for example, I didn't know how to do, how to apply CV immediately, how to organize it and so on, because it's a little bit another rules in each country. And, uh, was, and you know, as usually, life usually send you someone <laughs> as angel. Uh, and such angel was a girl who was daughter of my students, uh, former students from Odessa, because in Odessa I also worked at university at mathematical department. I was head of uh, mathematical physics department there. And uh, Tanya, Tanya Gavrilchenko, she worked, she found me absolutely occasionally, she sent me some uh, Skype text, hello, I'm Tanya Gavrilchenko, I'm daughter of your students, maybe you remember them. And I work as postdoc, at my postdoc in USA. And if you want some place in USA, we have a lot of positions which we can propose to Ukrainians, to support Ukrainian scientists. And uh, I was very grateful to her and asked how and what, but I understood was that with mom and dogs it's impossible to cross uh, ocean. And I told her that we applied to mom's Ukrainian scheme. And she says, I will ask my director of my institute what is possible to find in the UK. And it was her advice. And so practically she was my angel who advised me to do it. She told, you know, it's uh, such institute exists and they have such program, solidarity program. You can try to apply, try. Maybe would be useful. That was my first understanding how all this happened. So so this was first step. And uh, I went to site and really found this program, but not only this, she uh, told me that I can write to someone there. She says, don't worry if you don't know people absolutely, just try and explain your situation. And my first letter I wrote to 
amazing, very kind person, Ulrike Tillman. Uh, and she answered me. She was incredibly busy, and I thought maybe no, my letter just she she will not answer and so on. But I really, in few weeks, I got answer, and she says yes, yes, of course we can try to do something. Go to the site, find this program, solidarity program, and try to apply. Just explain me your situation, and you know she asked in absolutely how to say non formal way. Because we used in our country for more f f formality, you know, between people. Uh, here she says, just explain me what, what is with you. And absolutely unknown person, she asked me how I am, what is with me, how I cross border, what is, how are you with mom, and how is she, how old is she? She is 88 years old. It's her second evacuation, can you imagine? First evacuation was during Second World War, when she was a kid. She was evacuated to Siberia from Germans. And now... It's second evacuation of in her life. Too much for one person, really. And uh, when I sent this email to Ulrike, and she answered me, I started to do my application to Solidarity for Grant. But then I found at the same site uh, such announcements, you know, from universities, where they say that they have some positions for people in mathematics. And because all my life I used to work, I thought, why should I need really grant? Maybe better not to ask for grant, maybe try uh, to apply there where they confidently know that they need people. That's why I decided to apply and to ask people from this side, you know. And so first what I found was a proposition of King's College. It was proposition of Professor Nikolai Gromov, that if you need some help, please you can connect with us. And in parallel, it was as two branches, you know. In one, I applied one branch and one direction. I applied for solidarity grant because they say, let's let's see, maybe we can help you. Yes, apply. And I tried. So, and second, I applied to this... Uh, I, I just sent email to Professor Gromov where I also explained my situation and told him that if possible and they need somehow some work, I would be happy to, to be helpful. And such all is started. Uh, there in King's College, they were very, very kind, and they really helped, no, incredibly also, because they immediately connected with me. And Professor Eugen Shargorodsky, he helped me also, Incredibly, he called me immediately. We recall that we met with him even on some conferences in Georgia because we, our scientific directions are not far, you know. And then he and his another colleague, Professor Alexander Pushnitsky, they all really you know did so many that I can't say how I'm grateful for for them. But in this way, solidarity program told me that they really, after some meeting, they decided that it's possible to give me ground. But at this moment, King's College told that it's possible to find temporary work there for uh, checking scripts, you know, student scripts after exams. And of course, I was happy because it was real work, so why to ask for grant? But what was absolutely touchful and was you know, incredibly for me, that when... Um, Ulrika wrote me, and then another person wrote me, Christy Mar. They told that they decided that it's possible to give some support not only for me, but for my mom also, you know. It was incredible, really, absolutely incredible. And I told, thank you very much, thank you, but it seems that I found this work. That's why I don't need a grant. Yes, I can work and earn money myself. It's perfect, absolutely. It's better than grant. And they told, okay, uh, if you uh, find really this work, if you're now in good position, give us, show us your contract even. And we will check, can we help you somehow, anyway, or now, you know. I say, thank you very much, I will try, and so on. And I started this uh, position, temporary work in King's College with checking of scripts. And uh, they told, in, it, it maybe went summer, when I got from Christy Mar again a mail where she said, how are you, Natalia? How are you there? You know, so a person didn't forget about me. It was incredible. I was so, it was so, 
ну, helpful, friendly. And you know, when you f- you're absolutely alone, new country, new rules, and you feel someone uh, behind your back who support you, because they told, if you have any problem, please, you can apply for us. We will help you. If now you are okay, but you have no constant position, if you need, we will give you something. So just tell us. And I told, you know, if I find this work at King's College, what is difficult for me, it's way. Because very expensive tickets for trains, and they can't, of course, um, effort uh, some property in London. <laughs> it's impossible. So I need to take train each time to London in days where I work. And if it's possible to help me somehow just with train. And it was amazing. They say, okay, we will give you welcome grant. We will give you it to support you in it. I can't even say how I'm grateful, really. And um, then in practically what August, end of August, it was proposition to pass interview in King's College for this Uh, one-year position and I was very happy to it because it's incredible place incredible people you know and they they, I met with Dean of this college uh, Stephen Gilmore his position his uh, head of school mathematical school there in 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 our uh, correspondence with Ukraine it's position of Dean so I told it but it's not Dean of course in in words here and he and uh, his colleagues they found this place they found work for me and I can't even say how how grateful I am and I was very happy to send by email this contract to Christy and to show his look thank you very very much I found work I'm so happy and they say okay but we want also to make you happy maybe a little bit more and they gave me possibility to be a member of uh, London Mathematical Society, you know, for one year. Incredible, really. So, so friendly, you know, so, no, human. I even can't say, you know. So, what such now, now I'm working in King's College. No, difficult a little bit. As my colleague, Professor Pushnitsky, told, he says, you are going through institutionalization now, you know. <laughs> it's not easy, but incredible help of all stuff, you know, from G- what Stephen Gilmore, uh, Nikolai Gromov, Pushnitsky, Professor, Professor Shargorodsky, uh, Professor uh, Constant Rates, uh, people who work as managers' offices, because I also, it's annoying a little bit when person don't know and ask much time, what should I do, or how should I do, you know. They're always very helpful. Shayon Desiree, Donna Nichols, Francis Benton, they all helped practically, no, a lot. Uh, so what my position now is such, I try to do my best, try to, to be helpful and useful. I can't imagine what such a journey must have been like, and particularly to go from, you said at the beginning that you were Professor of Mathematical Physics at Odessa. In Odessa, the head of department. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to go from that to being a refugee. Yes, and to sitting in the refugee camp. And you know, the most impression, what awful that I remember, when we ne- it was needed to go to Romania from Moldova. And they started because they had no such trains even. There were huge, huge crowds on railway, you know, what we only saw, our generation, we only saw this in the, some films, movies about Second World War. And it was such expressions that I am a main hero in some terrible blockbuster about Second World War. I'm with my mom on a wheelchair. We are absolutely in huge crowd and impossible with these tickets even to go to this, to, to come close to, to wagon, you know, to put her in it wagon. And wagons were old one with stairs where you can't just cross gap and go in, you know, or you should go by stairs on hands. For mom who is 88 in a wheelchair, it was impossible. For my dogs, it was impossible. And can you imagine some unknown people, they lifted mom along from this crowd. So mom was, I was on uh, outside. In two minutes, 
this train should go. Mom is inside, dog's with me. So it was really a storm of this, you know, of this wagon. And in wagon, all people, kids, old people, uh, animals, cats, all, all practically people tried to, do, to take the animals with them, their pets. We all were on the floors. So it was some old people, kids with moms, they were on some seats, uh, all as me and someone as me. We all were practically on the floor. So it's it was real evacuation film, you know, where you and somehow as main hero, you know, and difficult to trust yourself. And a lot of my friends, they told such impression, you know, that it's some bad dream. And I will awake and all will be as it was. And uh, I think about months was needed when we understood that it's not a dream. We can't awake, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, we crossed really, uh, this refugee camp was awful. But I should say how uh, w people tried to help. Moldova people, they were very kind because all these first waves of refugee came to territory of Moldova, which is very small, really. And we have this small place in Palanka. It's a special place where we have common border with Ukraine. And they tried to do what was possible. They gave hot tea, they gave some um, sandwiches, something like this. They tried to help people. But it's even difficult to imagine who how it was, how these waves came and came, women and kids, women and kids, women and kids, are all men, dads, brothers, husbands, they all left, they, they all were territory of Ukraine and say goodbye through this border, and that's all. And many of them died from this moment on the fronts. And they will never e see each other again, you know. No even difficult to imagine now through my agree yeah i think everybody listening to this will join me in wishing for an end to this conflict as soon as possible um and that perhaps some kind of normality might return at one point um so i thank you for sharing that because i know it's it's yeah. difficult to relive such things um, true so thank you very much well, i hope not even end we need not end we need we need victory, we need to win. We can't live with, without victory. We can't, we, I hope it will be so. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, um, w given your experience, what would you say to anybody listening to this, finding themselves in a similar position? They obviously wouldn't be amongst the first refugees to leave Ukraine, but anyone in Ukraine who would like to find uh, some kind of refuge outside of the country or indeed anyone from an, another country being forced to leave due to uh, war or other circumstances. What, what would you say to someone in your position who is at the beginning of your journey now? No, you know, difficult but just to give advices. But the most important, you know, you should remember that... Uh, if now even it's terrible and it seems to you no, absolutely dark around you and you can't see something ahead, uh, believe, you should trust. It will be turn and you will see some light, sure, absolutely. And uh, I think I can just repeat, never, never, never surrender. <laughs> and uh, try to find something. And uh, I think that solidarity gave me uh, with such absolutely confident um, feeling, you know, that there are people who always will help. And it was really so. I even can't... Uh, in, would describe how it's important was to get these letters, you know, not even money, no, not, but some care of someone uh, who thinks about you, who knows that, ah, oh, some woman there, and how is she? 
maybe we can help. It was very, very important. And I think that, first of all, you should try to find search. You should search. You should search and you will find. Because a lot of good people around. But maybe that's that can help. And of course, you should know English, which is not easy for many people, you know. Because uh, in Ukraine now it's much better situation than it was in Soviet time. I remember Soviet time very good. And uh, all our young generation is very good with language, of course. But maybe people of my age, you know, which life half was in Soviet time, maybe they have this problem. And they, that's why maybe possible will be some problems there. But now, I think, first of all, you should understand that there are a lot, a lot of resources where you can try to apply. And what I think that Newton Institute, it's an amazing place with this solidarity problem, not only for Ukrainian, a lot of refugees, unfortunately, we have. And I think that such, you know, attention to some small person who came here, some, I don't know, it's this sand, you know, small piece of sand in this sea. And uh, to fi- they found you and they try to care about you. No, it's impossible to forget. I really even can't Im- say how I'm grateful to these people for their attention. And I, I, my advice, go, 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 try. Try. Don't sit. You should try and you will find. Yes. Yes. And good people will be always around. Sure. Of course, without help of uh, all these people I told from King's College, for example, would be, maybe, don't know, will I find something or not, but you should search anyway. Something like this. Well, hopefully this podcast and your words will connect with some people in a situation like yours and that they will also find a similar journey yeah I I hope very much I hope because I understand how difficult to sit without any work without understanding how to find it so I think it's now now also possible to find another resources for example a lot of uh, telegram uh, canals also which are uh, focused on the help for Ukrainian scientists, also possible to find. Thanks to internet, of course, thanks. Because, just because of it, possible to find a lot of resources and to connect with other people. And don't be shy. Explain your situation. Explain how you are. People should understand what's happened because it's difficult to normal person which every day away going to work kids going to school, no, normal life. It's very difficult really to imagine what's happened, how you from yesterday normal life going on the car across field under bombing. Is it me? Is it really so? Can't be. Yes, so, yes, in one day. That's why you should also explain, because in some situation maybe people really can't understand some moments. Describe. Describe how is it. Ask for help. Nothing bad in it. What something like this? Well, thank you very much, Natalia. That was really, really inspiring and helpful and uh, and you know, challenging to listen to and interesting and uplifting at the same time. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your invitation. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye bye.